Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I am your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually once again with our scorekeeper, Carter Zenke. Carter, how are you this morning? I'm again. doing great. Just happy to be connected over the internet with these fine people. Great. Yeah. My internet connection is not great. Um, yes, these fine people. Let's meet them. Uh, first, uh, we have Peter. Hello, my name is Peter. Uh, I'm a senior at Pomona College studying religious studies, and I'm excited back on the podcast as the poster boy of Trivia Over Tea. Theo needs to be put in his place, and I'm drinking in, our, in honor of our Lord and Savior, Queen Elizabeth II, some English breakfast. <laughs> well, very good. Wow. Yeah, thank uh, We're so glad to have you back on, Peter. It's been um, way too long. Peter was on our second episode ever, um, way back in the in the Stone Ages of this podcast. Um, and uh, so we also have today Theo. Hi, I'm Theo. I'm a sophomore at Pomona. Uh, I, I'm studying math and music, uh, and I'm drinking uh, uh, matcha tea at the moment. Very good. Um, I have in my brand new Pomona College class of 2020 mug which they gave to us at commencement weekend but i didn't know that i had it in my goodie bag until like two weeks ago um i have my earl gray tea so now we are ready to go as with all of our regular episodes we'll have four rounds of questions today each with a slightly different format and so without further ado carter we'll explain the rules for round one yes round one is our first general knowledge round where you each get five multiple choice questions Questions here are worth 10 points each. If you get that, that one right, you'll get those 10 points. So. Excuse me. All righty, Peter, you're up first. Are you ready? Of course. OK, here we go. Question one. On September 14th, 1814, Francis Scott Key penned the poem that would become the Star Spangled Banner, which he titled The Defense of What Fort? A, McHenry, B, Sumter, or C, Ticonderoga? I'm going to go with A. That's correct, Fort McHenry. It's located in Baltimore Harbor. He was on board a British ship and witnessed the bombardment of Fort McHenry by the British. He was inspired to write the poem when, in the morning, the American flag still flew above the fort. Question two. In 1752, the British Empire adopted what calendar, which is in use by the world today? A, the Julian calendar, B, the Gregorian calendar, or C, the Roman calendar? Oh boy. My initial thought was the Roman calendar, but then when you said Julian, that sounded pretty correct as well. But I'm going to stick with my initial gut instinct, perhaps to my own demise, and say the Roman calendar. Um, actually, it was the Gregorian calendar. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, it was first introduced by Pope Gregory the Thirteenth as a modification of the Julian calendar. The principal change was uh, for the uh, to the rule for leap years. And according to the United States Naval Observatory, every year that is exactly divisible by four is a leap year, except for years that are exactly divisible by a hundred. But these centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible by four hundred. So, for example, the years seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred, and nineteen hundred are not leap years but the year 2000 is. Question three. What is the maximum number of clubs a golfer is legally allowed to have in their bag during competition? A, 12, B, 14, or C, 16? Well, Matthew, I'm sorry to say that I do not care about golf. I'm gonna go with B. Uh, that would be correct. It is 14. I'm insane. <laughs> you're, you're doing great so far. Uh, question four. Which of the following types of muscles include voluntary muscles? A, cardiac muscles, B, smooth muscles, or C, skeletal muscles? Hmm. I'm going to say skeletal muscles. Uh, that's correct. Uh, cardiac and smooth muscles are strictly involuntary. Um, and I will 
I will also add that uh, four of these questions, including that one I wrote uh, to help me study for an exam that I have to take next week. You're uh, welcome. That's beside the point. Anyway, question five. The 1979 film Quadrophenia is loosely based on the rock opera album of the same name by which English band? A, Paul McCartney and Wings, B, The Rolling Stones, or C, The Who? Oh dear. Well, I'm not familiar with this 1979 work, which I think will, uh, is, is a fact that will work against me in this question. Um, I'm going to say The Who. That is correct. Uh, the band previously had their 1969 rock opera Tommy adapted into a film in 1975. Theo, do you have something to add? I do have something to add. I was actually, my choir was in a production of Quadrophenia with Eddie Vedder and Pete Townshend. We sang, we sang the choral part in like, uh, I don't know, 2018 maybe. Wow. That's pretty cool. Really, really uh, scorn that I didn't get that question. Would have been Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, all right. That well, was my question. Yeah. You should ask about lyrics. I mean, come on. Well, I think um, I'm, I'm a little worried that th there's part of me that is a little worried that you're going to get all the questions that I wrote correct, um, in which case I'll never be able to come to choir ever again. Um, but uh, we'll find out, uh, Castillo, it's uh, your turn. So are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. Question one. Which major restaurant chain's Twitter account only follows six people named Herb and each of the five Spice Girls? A, Popeyes, B, Canes, or C, KFC? Uh, it's a, a reference to their secret recipe, I believe, uh, of however many herbs and spices. Uh, it is KFC. 11, yes. Yeah. This is in reference to the 11 herbs, herbs and spices the chain says that it uses to season its chicken. Thanks, Theo. Question two. An early biography of President Franklin Pierce was written by what American author who was one of Pierce's friends at Bowdoin College? A, Herman Melville, B, Nathaniel Hawthorne, or C, Edgar Allan Poe? God, presidential trivia. Really makes you, really makes you think. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're trying to do time periods. And I, I realize now that I, I don't know what time period Pierce was, like at all. Did he, did he fight in like the Mexican-American War? Is this, is this a thing that happened? Um, hmm. I believe he, uh, I think he did actually. Okay, so that's a vague sense of time period. And now time periods on all the authors. Uh, <laughs> Bowdoin, God, I feel like Poe went to Bowdoin, but I also feel like it would be insane for Poe to write a, like a biography. This is the thing that he did. I'll go with Poe, sure. It was actually Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, the biography was written in 1852 while Pierce was running for president. Despite Pierce's unpopularity, the two remained friends until the end of Hawthorne's life when Pierce found him dead in bed in 1864. So there you go. Question three. Which of the following muscles is not a muscle of expiration? A, the diaphragm, B, the internal intercostals, or C, the quadratus lumborum? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Well, expiration makes you think of inspiration. So if it's not the diaphragm, if the diaphragm isn't one, then my God. Uh, uh, and then two muscles that I've never heard of. Uh, but B, I mean, come on. B sounds like a, a breathing muscle. Like you heard that and you're like, oh, that's a breathing muscle, of course. So let's go for C. Um, it was actually A, the diaphragm. Uh, the diaphragm, which is attached to the seventh through 12th ribs is primarily a muscle of inspiration and can descend up to seven centimeters when singers take a breath. There you go. Question four. Hilbert's program was an attempt to create a complete and consistent set of rules for what major field? A, music theory. B, mathematics, or C, biology? This is Tobert? Hilbert. Hilbert. Oh, Hilbert. Uh, uh, that's that's got to be music theory. Um, it's actually mathematics. Really? Um, oh, uh, for... ah, no, I knew that. <laughs> well, then you should have guessed mathematics. 
Um, sure. Unfortunately for David Hilbert, the 1931 production of Gödel's incompleteness theorems would prove that creating such a set of rules for math was impossible, as Gödel proved that you could create true statements that cannot be proven or disproven. And finally, question five. Members of what pop band wrote the music for the musical Chess? A, ABBA, B, Duran Duran, or C, Fleetwood Mac? ABBA, look, ABBA already has Mama Mia. They, they, can't, they can't have two musicals to their name. That, that'd just be too much. Um, chess. I'm, I'm aware of the musical as a whole. Uh, I know people that really like it, so. I'm not among them. <laughs> hmm. Let's go for, oh God, pop music. Let's go for Fleetwood Mac. It was actually ABBA. Uh, Benny Anderson and Bjorn um, Uvajus, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, wrote the music. Um, and Bjorn and Tim Rice wrote the lyrics and Rice wrote the libretto of the version that debuted on the West End in 1986. That's just too much. ABBA, stop. It's got some beautiful music though. And I would love to play the Russian, just saying, if anybody wants to cast me. Well, that's the end of round one. And uh, this is going much better than I expected it would. Um, Carter, would you please give us a score update? We have Peter at 40 and Theo at 10. Fantastic. All righty. Uh, now it is time for round two. So Carter, will you please explain the rules? Yes, round two is our open-ended question round, where you each get five questions on the very very same topic. Questions here are worth 20 points each. If you get one wrong, your opponent can answer for 10 points. All righty. Well, um, I didn't know what I was going to do for round two because uh, there weren't any like prominent famous birthdays or anything or like famous events for September 14th. Um, however, um, on Thursday, there was a fairly significant uh, death in the world, and that was Queen Elizabeth II. And so uh, both uh, both of you are going to get five questions um, about Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family. Uh, so, Peter, are you ready for your five questions? Yes, I am. Okay. Question one. For 73 years, Elizabeth was married to what prince who held the title of the Duke of Edinburgh? Oh, boy. Prince... Oh, no. Charles. No. Theo? <laughs> that is uh, Prince Philip. It was Prince Philip. Uh, Philip was born into the Greek and Danish royal families and was, like Elizabeth, descended from Queen Victoria. Question two. When she ascended to the throne in 1952, who was the prime minister of the United Kingdom? It's somebody you've heard of. Well... Prime Minister that I've heard of in roughly that era would be Winston Churchill. That is correct. Uh, this was during his second stint as Prime Minister from 1951 to 1955, having previously been Prime Minister from 1940 to 1945. Question three. What youngest son of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip is the only one of their four children who has not gotten divorced? Oh, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've already used my 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 Charles answer, <laughs> which is the only one of her sons that I know. Um, so I'm going to say William, which is another British name. Another British name, not a son of Elizabeth and Philip, though. Um, Theo, do you know? Mm, uh, princes. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe it is Charles. <laughs> Let's uh, go back to old faithful, Charles. Uh, no, uh, Charles divorced Princess Diana in 1996. Um, Princess Anne divorced uh, Mark Phillips in 1992. Prince Andrew divorced Sarah Ferguson in 1996. Um, the correct answer is Prince Edward. Um, and he and uh, Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, have been married since 1999. Good for them. Yeah. Question four. What code phrase named for a landmark in the British capital is used to describe the funeral plan for Elizabeth II? Code name based on a landmark in the British capital. Um, 
I'll say Big Ben. No. Theo, do you know? I it, it's up there. It what's coming to mind is is um London Bridge. I don't know, something about London Bridge falling, maybe. <laughs> yes, Operation London Bridge. Uh, the plan was first created in the 1960s and revised several times. It meticulously planned the details of the immediate aftermath of the Queen's death. And finally, question five. For the opening ceremony of the 2012 Summer Olympics in London, Elizabeth made her entrance into the Olympic Stadium by jumping out of a helicopter with what actor who played James Bond? Oh. Well... Oh my goodness, I am I can picture him. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Very good. All righty, Theo, are you ready for your five questions about the Queen? As ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Question one. Elizabeth's father, George VI, suddenly ascended to the throne in 1936 when his brother, Edward VIII, abdicated so that he could marry what American actress and socialite? Edward, I mean, that was so long ago. It was. Uh, <laughs> it really was. Uh, actresses, uh, actresses from before, like, anyone alive today was born. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't think I can name one. I don't think I could even think of an actress. Have you seen The Crown? <laughs> God, no. Okay. I would, I would have gotten all these questions right if I'd seen the crown. That's true. That's true. I think I think I, I have literally no idea. Audrey Hepburn. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, Peter, do you know? Oh, boy. I forgot that it would go to me. I think it's a little um, early for Audrey Hepburn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. A little early for Audrey Hepburn. Um, let's see. No, that's also too early. I'm not I'm not sure. That's before my knowledge of actresses, unfortunately. Have you seen The Crown? I have not. Okay. Uh, the answer is Wallace Simpson. Uh, the marriage was deemed morally unacceptable because Simpson was already divorced and she was American. So question two. As Queen of the United Kingdom, Elizabeth was also the head of what group of sovereign nations that were, for the most part, former British colonies? Uh, the Commonwealth. That's correct. Uh, the Commonwealth consists of 56 nations around the world. Question three. Elizabeth's reign of 70 years and 214 days is the second longest recorded reign of any monarch in world history, only to what former king of France? Um, former kings of France. Well, I was, I was in a French history class last semester, so... Uh, it's really telling that I, I am struggling to name one. This, <laughs> this guy probably like came up. This guy probably came up. <laughs> okay. Um, it's gotta be one of the Louis then. Mm -hmm. It's not Louis the 16th because yikes. Uh, yeah, so Louis, yeah, <laughs> cut short. It's, Thank you. I get the point of that one. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, let, let's stop. Uh, let's stop over our head. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, so we're going to go for uh, the other Louis of prominence, and that is the Sun King, Louis XIV. That is correct. Uh, Louis XIV ruled France for 72 years and 110 days. Question four. Just this past Tuesday, the Queen installed whom as her 15th Prime Minister? Oh my God. I can't believe I've already forgotten. <laughs> I've seen so much media about this one. Um, uh, can I just like describe her physically? I feel like I could, I could, I can picture her in my mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Although I don't um, know, I don't know if this counts as a uh, trivia. Um, um, we're we're looking for a name. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have a name. Uh, uh, It's just, um, it's Theresa May again. It's she. She's back. She. She's on her uh, like her farewell tour. 
<laughs> no. Uh, Peter, do you know? Oh, I would say Beatrice, Beatrice Washlings Dalington. Um, creative, but no. Uh, no, this is Liz Truss. Um, and uh, oh, I heard I on... I was close. Y yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very close. Um, but no, uh, Liz Truss, uh, I heard on uh, KNX on Thursday when I was driving out to Claremont um, that her first prime minister, Winston Churchill, was born in 1874 and Truss was born in 1975, 101 years later. So, fun fact. And finally, question five. Since Charles is king, what grandson is, of Elizabeth is now the Prince of Wales and heir to the throne? Uh, the monarchy's a, a weird thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, grandson of Charles. Grandson of Elizabeth. Of Elizabeth. Of son of Charles. So son, of, son of Charles. That's how that works. Mm -hmm. Doesn't just uh, yeah the monarchy actually it skips a generation it's never yeah I think some people in England would have preferred that um, this time around but uh, alas okay British British given names of people princes uh, I mean like it can't be Prince Harry come on but also I don't think I can name another prince so <laughs> we're gonna have to go with Harry. Mm. Um, no, not Prince Harry. Uh, Peter? Well, my logic here is that the British monarchs and monarchs in general love naming their heirs after themselves. So I'm going to say Prince Charles. Mm, not a bad guess. Um, also incorrect. Um, the answer is Prince William. Uh, he is the eldest son of Charles and Diana. So... There you go. Well, that's the end of round two. So, Carter, can you please give us a score update? We have a closer game with Peter at 80 and Theo at 70. All righty. Well, now it is time for round three. So, Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round three is a lot like round two, but now you have questions on a variety of topics. Questions here are worth 30 points each. And if you get one wrong, your opponent can answer for 15. All righty. Peter, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Question one. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is a park on top of the tunnel that carries what interstate highway through downtown Boston? Hmm. Well, I would, I think my, my guess, my best guess is I-90, the Mass Pike. Uh, it's not I-90. Theo, do you want to take a guess? Other interstates in Boston. I was, I was recently there. Um, The like, well, the nineties there, the ninety, what like the ninety four, ninety three, ninety five, one of those is in there. Um, so let's go with one of those. I like I like uh, uh, numbers that are divisible by five. Let's go for the ninety five. Mm. Uh, it was ninety three. Uh, in uh, in nineteen ninety one, uh, construction began to move I ninety three, which was then above ground, to a tunnel that was completed seventeen years later. Local leaders used the opportunity to establish a park on the land once taken up by the freeway, which now covers 17 acres in downtown Boston. Question two. Boyle's law states that pressure and what are inversely proportional? Well, I haven't taken chemistry or a physics class since sophomore year of high school. But what about a vocology class? I've never taken a vocology class. I'm going to say heat. No. Uh, <laughs> Wait, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. It's not true, but I'll keep it. Right, do, we, we'll let you take another another guess because you, you got it in there before I said anything. So do you want to? Okay, because I think that pressure and heat are just proportional instead of inverse proportional would be my guess but that's not my problem <laughs> enough of your grumblings matthew <laughs> i hmm pressure force uh no theo 
Um, I think heat was close because it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a tricky question because it involves actually knowing which one is which because they all they're all part of the ideal gas law. I think that the answer is temperature for boils specifically. Um, boils is uh, pressure and volume are in are inversely proportional. Is it like Rolf's law? Is it pressure and temperature or something? Could not tell you. This is the one that I have to know for the exam. So, yeah. And it's it as as your uh, as the volume of your rib cage expands, then the pressure goes down inside. It's all about air breathing. All righty, we're moving on. Question three: With about twenty one percent of the market share, what airline is the largest by total number of passengers at Los Angeles International Airport? That's specifically Los Angeles. Specifically Los Angeles. Okay. That's a great question. Thank you. I wrote it. Yeah. It's amazing that we get to talk about aviation on mm -hmm. this on this podcast. It is amazing. That being said, I think my best guess. I'm thinking of a couple different airlines. I'm tossing around Delta, American. I'm actually, you know, I, I'm just I'm gonna go with American. I believe LAX is one of their hubs. LAX is one of their hubs, but it is not American. Uh, Theo? Well, well, Peter's committed a, a fatal mistake here. He's offered up an alternative in his musings. Uh, <laughs> uh, and as, you know, someone who's knowledgeable about airplanes, I feel like I'd be remiss not to take uh, Peter's uh, urging. To, to say Delta. So let's go for Delta. It was Delta. Uh, this is in the period uh, from January to May uh, 2022. <laughs> um, American has 18% market share, followed by United at 16%. Yeah. Matthew, I will, I want to point out that in your little rules sheet and telling us what to do, you said, please think out loud because I, this I is do. an auditory experience, not a visual experience, and people can't hear you think. And so I said to myself, you know, I will do that for you. Thank you. And now you, the, uh, you've got to, you've got to lay traps out loud as well, though. You're like, ooh, I'm I'm really thinking that it could be Ryanair. Ryanair has really been rising in the markets recently, especially at Los Angeles International yeah. Airport. Um, yes. Well, and Peter, I am so grateful that you have finally read something that I have written. Um, <laughs> at any welcome. rate, uh, question four. In 2016, it was announced that Mrs. White would be replaced by Dr. Orchid in the latest release of what classic board game? You may notice I have fallen silent. I did. <laughs> clue. It is Clue. Yes, that I would was... have been very upset if you got that wrong. That's I've never wrong played game. Clue, fun fact. I... Really? I pulled that out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. It is my favorite board game. So we'll play it sometime. Yes. I, I have without it. Theo. Without oh. Theo, do you take notes when you play Clue? Do you play you, Clue? You literally the only part of Clue that is a game is the taking notes. Everything else is like like otherwise it's just baseless speculation. You're just like, yeah, I think it was probably Colonel Mustard. <laughs> no. Okay. Good. That's, that's all I needed to know. Uh, yes, we will play it sometime. Uh, question five. From 1999 to 2000, future U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson clerked for what justice whom she succeeded on the court? Hmm. My Supreme Court knowledge is lacking. Oh, boy. <laughs> Was it RBG? No, not her. Uh, Theo? Democrats on the Supreme Court who, it's, it's, that, it's that guy. It's that guy who is old. <laughs> yep. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's a B name. Uh, I want to, I'm thinking of a rabbit. <laughs> and that, that makes me think of Br'er Rabbit. So, what is it? oh, it's, it's um, it's uh, 
It's something. It's very close. I'm I'm extraordinarily close. You, you are. You are surprisingly it, extraordinarily uh, close. It'll come to me. It, mm -hmm. This might take a while though. Do, do I have a time limit? Are we? Can we just sit here for like an hour? Well, well, I'm. Well, it's a. I do have other things to do today. It, but... It's fine. I, I got it. It's it's a Breyer. Yeah, uh, Breyer. Yeah, we'll we'll give it to you, uh, Stephen Breyer. Uh, yeah. Well. We'll give it to you. Uh, Jackson succeeded him on June 30th, 2022, becoming the 104th person to be an associate justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. All righty. Theo, are you ready for your five questions? I'm so ready. Okay. Question one. The Kennedy Expressway extending from downtown Chicago to O'Hare is made up of I-190 and portions of I-90 and what other interstate highway? Worst thing about, about Chicago. And so I was like, okay, what could you possibly ask about? And I'm like, it's either going to be the Dan Ryan or the Kennedy. And I was like, okay, prob probably should read up on, on that. And I was like, I knew they were both the I-90. I, I, the, the Dan Ryan is the I-90 and the 94. So the Kennedy has to be the I-90 and then what it's like northwest so it's like the i said the northwest <laughs> what, what what two did i what who was i given um you were given i-190 and i-90 i-190 and 90 i-190 and 90 there's an i-190 <laughs> uh yes i th i think i uh, i pulled this question from an earlier uh episode um yeah, I'm not sure exactly where I-190 is. But I believe it heads off in the... Am I frozen again? Uh, I believe it heads off in the northwest direction from downtown Chicago. It, it's, yeah, it spans like the whole thing. It, it, it's just a long... So it's a long road. It is but a long road. I believe the Kennedy is in the northwest, and that makes me want to say the um, the 294, which is up there. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, Peter, do you know? Well, I'm not from Chicago, but I've driven through there a few times. And I do know that the I-90 overlaps with I-80 for a portion. I don't think that's necessarily where it overlaps with it, if we're talking about the Northwest, but I'm going to still stick with the I-80. You said I-80, right? I said I-80. Yeah, uh, that's incorrect. Um, Theo, you actually mentioned this in your musings. Uh, it was I-94. Um, and uh, in the uh, Mayfair neighborhood, I-94 splits off from the Kennedy Expressway and continues north as the Edens Expressway. Question two. Um, what Tennessee Williams play begins with this opening soliloquy? Yes, I have tricks in my pocket. I have things up my sleeve, but I am the opposite of a stage mag uh, magician. He gives you the, an illusion that has the appearance of truth. I give you truth in the pleasant disguise of illusion. Okay. We know we know three Tennessee Williams plays. Um, I would list them if I didn't think that Peter would poach them. Uh, <laughs> I'm using my own, <laughs> taking my own. <laughs> one is about. Um, well, one is famous. It can't be a streetcar named Desire because, like, come on, that's 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 too famous. I feel like I would know the opening lines of a streetcar named Desire. Um, I feel like I I know this. I feel like I've heard this before. Um, it can't be the one about um, an animal that is sitting on uh, a thing above you, mm -hmm. because like, come on, it just can't be. So we're going to go for the only other one that I know, uh, which is uh, the uh, Glass Menagerie. That is correct. Uh, the soliloquy is delivered by Tom, Tom Wingfield, who serves as the narrator and protagonist of the play. Yeah, it's not really in the spirit of A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, nor... I mean, I don't know cat, uh, cat on, on, uh, on a hot tin roof at all, but it's not that one. Yes, glass mat. It's, glass it's about a man who's gay, and that, that's all that I know. Uh, that's all that matters, really. Okay, question three. The only two unpaired muscles in the body are the diaphragm and the what? The unpaired muscles. Unpaired muscles... 
I would think that that means that they don't have like bilateral symmetry, right? And that makes sense for the diagram, which sits like right here. So it's like, what else? What else could there be that isn't symmetric over this? We're very symmetric people. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Like the throat, maybe? The esophagus? <laughs> Does that come as muscle? Like smooth muscle? The esophagus? Let's go for it. The esophagus. Okay. I don't think that's a muscle. Maybe it is. Mm. I don't know. I shouldn't be how saying does, that. How does, uh... Is, but like you can swallow things by your upside down, right? So some kind of peristalsis happens in the esophagus. That's, That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you what. Um, biology was definitely my worst subject in high school. So yeah, this is not my department, but it is not the esophagus uh, regardless. Peter, do you know? Well, using Theo's logic, I I would like to say... I don't know the names of the individual muscles in the heart, but because the heart is not symmetrical, I'm going to say a heart muscle. Um, no, it is actually not in the heart. Um, this is the uh, uh, procerus muscle. Um, it is the it is pyramid shaped and sits at the top of the nose. It's this one right here, and assists actually, in furrowing the brows. So. I considered that one, but I didn't know its name, so I Fair didn't enough. name it. We, we maybe could have given you half credit if, uh -huh. you, if you pointed to it, because we have been we have been known to be generous with half credit in the past. So, yes, but it is the procerus muscle. All other all other muscles um, other than the diaphragm and the procerus are paired, meaning that we have two of them, like two biceps, triceps, et cetera, et cetera. So there you go. Question four. A chance elevator meeting between um, Tetsuya Nomura and a Disney executive led to the creation of what major video game franchise about Sora's journey, journeys through the different Disney worlds to defeat the Heartless? It is uh, the video game series with the most bonkers storyline out there. I, I have never played it, nor have I ever seen any footage of anyone playing it. I know nothing about this besides its name. <laughs> uh, I believe it is Kingdom Hearts. That is correct. Um, I authorized my brother to write one video game question since you listed it on your contestant information sheet. Um, and I'm sure he'll be very happy that you got it right. Question five. The painting Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz Bannock Koch, also known as the Shooting Company of Franz Bannock Koch and William von Reutenberg, is more commonly referred to as what? I, <laughs> I love this one. Uh, uh, when I was doing trivia in high school, it was always a big flex if you would uh, give the absolute worst answer line to a question. Because mm -hmm. like, if you give an alternate title to something, but it's still a correct title, you have to take it. This is one of those ones. Uh, also like saying book titles in their original language. Uh, this is... Uh, everyone's favorite Rembrandt painting, uh, The Night Watch. That is correct. Everyone's famous uh, favorite uh, painting by Rembrandt uh, is on display at the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam. So that's the end of the, round. Uh, you know, go for it. Do you have something else to add? I had a bit, a bit of trivia about The Night Watch, which Please. is that uh, despite the name, it actually depicts a, a day scene, and it's just um, a build up on the painting that makes it look like it's night. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for that bit of knowledge, Theo. Uh, well, now it is the it end of the round. It should be a podcast. No, no, don't true. wow me, Peter. <laughs> uh, well, that is the end of round three. Um, so, Carter, can you please give us a score update? We have our very first lead change with Peter at 110 and Theo at 190. All right, and now it is time for round four. So, Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round four is our showdown, where you'll each get the same three questions. Questions here are worth 40 points each, and we'll ask you to write down your answers or otherwise make note of them, and we'll reveal them at about the same time. 
All righty, Peter, Theo, are you ready? Almost. Yes. Ready. Okay. We have an old Amazon return slip. Fantastic. That we're going to be writing on the back of. That that works great. Great use of saving. Great uh, saving paper. Yeah. All righty. Here we go. Question one, what Roman goddess of agriculture, among other things, is the namesake for a dwarf planet? Answers, perhaps. We'll make Theo go first. Theo, what is your answer? I've answered series, like Peter. cereal. Like cereal. Peter? I, I have answered, should I show the camera? Are you sure? OK, it might blur it because of my background. I answered Demeter. I swear it's true. <laughs> uh, um, so we'll, so Peter, we'll give you half credit because uh, she is the Roman counterpart to Demeter. Um, but this is series. Yes. Um, and my fun fact was that, that she was the Roman counterpart to Demeter. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, very good. All righty. Question two. The Neverland Ranch was the private residence of what singer from 1988 to 2005? <laughs> Good. Okay. Do we have guesses, answers, perhaps? Peter, what did you guess or answer? My guess was. Barbara Streisand. Okay, Peter, uh, Theo, sorry. Uh, I had no guess, essentially. Um, I wrote down the, the wonderful, definitely right guess of Taylor Swift. Uh, Taylor Swift, who was not alive. Who was definitely alive in 1988. I'm, but... I'm not sure that she, was she alive in 1988? Maybe. She'd be I, believe, I believe she was. Okay. If you think of her album titled 1984, I, I did not know that that was the title of her album. Okay. Well, well, this is a trivia podcast, so I thought I'd offer some, some well, trivia. As I probably have mentioned one in, in uh, a few uh, instances, my area of expertise lies mostly with presidential trivia, American history, and geography, um, and classical music, and interstate highways. Um, pop culture is not one of my better subjects. Um, although I can pull out a few good questions here and there, including this one. I think this is a pretty good question. Uh, the answer, the resident of the Neverland Ranch from 1988 to 2005 was Michael Jackson. Um, it is located in Santa Barbara County, California, and the ranch covers about 2,700 acres. The property includes three railroads, a Ferris wheel, a carousel, a roller coaster, among other attractions. So there you go. And finally, question three. In a trial presided over by Chief Justice John Marshall, what former vice president was acquitted of treason in 1807? May I ask a clarifying question? Sure. When you say former vice president, is that in the general sense? Or was this person already the form, form, this person former? This person was vice already president? a former vice president in 1807. Okay, that may have helped Theo more than me. That's just the kind of guy I am. You're just giving. Uh, it's true. To your competitors. Yeah, I don't believe in winning. <laughs> well, that's probably a good mantra to have for this morning. Um. Okay. Do we have, do we have guesses? Um, 
I will say that if you knew all the former vice presidents, you'd only have three to choose from in this instant instance. So, uh, Peter, do you have a guess? Um, I should. I'm going to say John Adams. Okay. Theo? Uh, I went later. I went for Aaron Burr. So there were there were three former vice presidents at this point, one of whom was John Adams, and it is not John, John Adams. The second one uh, was Thomas Jefferson, who was the president at the time. And the third was Jefferson's vice president in his first term, and that was Aaron Burr. Uh, and it is Aaron Burr, yes. And mm -hmm. the accu the accusations against him alleged that he had intended to establish an independent country in the southwestern United States. He was arrested on President Jefferson's orders in February 1807, despite the lack of firm evidence against him, and he was acquitted in September of that year. And he had previously been Jefferson's vice president from 1801 to 1805, and had his infamous duel with Alexander Hamilton in 1804. Do you have anything to add, Theo? Um, everything's legal in New Jersey. Um, fair. Uh, uh, although not not trying to establish an independent country, I don't think. So, there you go. I wasn't trying to do it in New Jersey. How would we know? Uh, that's true. Uh, it, he was trying to do it in what is now Texas, and Lord knows Texas <laughs> is a lawless land. Lawless land. Um, at any rate, that's the end of the game. So, Carter, can you please give us the final score? Our final score is Peter with 130 and Theo with 270. Well, Theo, you have won. Do you have anything that you would like to say? <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the Academy, uh, my friends and family, um, Peter for telling me that Delta Airlines uh, is, a, is a, <laughs> a large airline in, in LA. Um, it's a large um, airline everywhere, Theo. It's a yeah. large airline everywhere. <laughs> it has to be considered. <laughs> I don't think I would have thought of Delta, but... Probably well, not. You're welcome. Well, very good. Uh, well, that's the end of... Uh, that's, uh, that's it for this... Uh, what am I supposed to say? Yeah, out later. yeah, thank you, Peter. Well, that's our show for this week, folks. Thank you, Peter and Theo, for being on the show today, as well as Carter Zenke for being our scorekeeper and Mason Cook for composing the music. All of today's questions were written by Mason Cook and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea, as well as our Twitter account, also at Trivia Over Tea. And feel free to message us on any of these platforms if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the show. And tune in next week when we'll have two new, uh, not next week, in two weeks' time, when we'll have two new contestants and 33 more. And